We'll start with the Irish Independent, and it is a picture of what happened at Daily Mount last night. Bowes sink 10-man rovers, Dinny Delight at Daily Mount. It's Dinny Corcoran celebrating his winning goal as uh, Bowes beat Shamrock Rovers 1-0. They seem to have the Indian sign over them at the moment uh, in the League of Ireland, so good news for everybody there. And uh, Ireland a bit broken by England fallout is the main story on the back of the Independent this morning. Coach believes frustrated stars are trying too hard to get to the standards that they set in 2018, which is something I just touched on a bit uh, a few moments ago. He says that the players were a bit broken by the fallout of the defeat to England and says the coaching staff are trying to rebuild their confidence. Just to go through some of the quotes, uh, he says, Sometimes it's just about taking a step back. We always talk about going forward. Sometimes you've got to take a step back and take a deep breath and not panic because I think the players were a bit, I suppose, a bit broken by the fallout from the England game and then suddenly they start to question themselves. I think the coaching staff, it's our job to re-energise the group and reignite the confidence. That Ultimately, that is the other side of this thing. That yeah. You can say it's not complacency, but ultimately, if the players are reacting in a negative way at all, it is still up to the coaching staff to actually correct that. Yeah, they need a good piss up this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. That is, that is the is, is that what you would have done during a uh, time when confidence was low? Yeah, yeah, get the get the pool table out, <laughs> Frankie Dolan. <laughs> 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 it, 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 is, it is a tricky one. Like, I'm sure, like once the, the confidence is that sort of low, or there is sort of this mystique around why it's so low. Is it like sometimes there is much more ridiculous ideas than actually you know going on the piss for a couple of days or yeah, do, you, doing something to just distract yourself from the process of being a rugby player for a couple I, of days? I didn't particularly like his comment, but then when I read it on, he did, of course, you can be misquoted where you say, you know, it's about us all getting back to just hard work. I don't particularly, I wouldn't necessarily like that because I think if you went into that panel and said, right, lads, we're going to double down on mm. the effort, it'd be like, oh, you know, come on. Yeah, because I can. They're all they're all given it. You you can just imagine the intensity and the pressure that's in there in, at the moment in that camp. You know, you go from here thinking great, and next thing you're down and everyone's questioning you. So I think maybe just a a, a, a blow off of steam is probably required. Yeah, maybe maybe happening as we speak right now. Who are yeah, we to know? Exactly. Uh, back page of the Herald this morning leads with that big result in the League of Ireland Premier Division last night. Bohemian Rhapsody is the headline. Bows go top as Corcoran penalty downs ten man Rovers in Derby. Uh, I was away at the weekend, so I haven't actually been able to follow Bowes this weekend. I did go to their first game of the season, and it's a great old atmosphere there at Daily Mount. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not sure if I've been kicked off the bandwagon because I missed the big one last <laughs> night. Uh, but they beat Rovers uh, 1-0. And Robertson looks uh, for spark to light reds. This is actually not too dissimilar. To s- the, the tone in the Liverpool camp at the moment isn't too dissimilar to the tone in the Ireland camp that yep. Andy Robertson there talking about uh, the idea of just trying to find that little something that Liverpool had at the, the start of the season in terms of trying to get this uh, Premier League title race back on track. Uh, the back page of the Racing Post this morning is Slog on the Tyne, Newcastle primed to stop confident Clarets. It's an 8pm kickoff tonight in the Premier League between Newcastle and Burnley. There's four fixtures in all. Uh, the Irish Examiner then leads with Kelly Harrington. Uh, without sport, I don't know where I would be. And you've also got uh, Kennedy, uh, Tracy Kennedy there, the Cork chair person, saying the only decision is for the Parky Quay pitch to be replaced. And Mike Quirk as well, writing about uh, Cork as well this morning. The Irish Times then leads with these Joe Schmidt quotes as well. Jerry Thornley's piece says, Schmidt admits to being worried about performances and then his own column is saying, Ireland's green machine running on dirty diesel. And Contopomi understands fiery Sexton's frustrations. So Leinster backs coach believes Ireland can learn from dips and become stronger. It seems that Felipe Contopomi sees a little bit of himself in Johnny Sexton at the moment and his body language. And uh, the Times Ireland edition, going with this as well, Schmidt, not, uh, Schmidt says, not time to panic over our form. You've also got that red card for Aaron Green there. It's the main picture on the back of the Times this morning as Rovers were reduced to 10 men, which seemed pivotal in the end. And uh, the Irish Daily Mail goes with Blues at War. Divisions over Kepa turns heat on Sarri. It's all happening at Chelsea at the moment. It seems like Maurizio Sarri is going to survive a little bit longer. And uh, you've got a few interesting quotes around the whole saga. Jose Mourinho, believe it or not, has uh, backed Kepa in this whole incident. Oh, yes. Like, it's... uh, Yeah, well, funny you say that because he is literally... All over <laughs> the old uh, the, the 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 tabloids. Sari reads Kepa riot act is in the sun, and uh, in the day Irish Daily Star you've got gloves are off. Chelsea players fuming at Kepa over humiliation of boss, um, and then it's saying that there's, there's speculation that Brendan Rodgers might be uh, on the Blues radar, which I'd find I don't know. Um, but of course, there he is, Jose in the mirror. Marino's verdict on Chelsea crisis, nothing like a man to walk in when everyone else is. Just to remind you, my old club's a sorry mess. Jose praises Kepa for showing personality. 
God's sake. Like Personality. Imagine who, how do you think Jose would have dealt with that? Oh, like uh, Jose would have tried his best to kick Kepa out of the club, would have failed because of the player power and culture that exists at Chelsea Football Club, and then Jose would have got kicked out of the club, and yeah. you basically repeat that immediately. Like, you talk about... I'd say uh, you could, or you actually possibly would have run onto the pitch, dragged him off. He, prob he probably would have. Well, he, he ran on, onto the pitch close enough to pull a physio or, or a doctor off the pitch <laughs> previously, so I presume you'd do it for a football player. Like, the, like we talk about, uh, you know, players getting complacent if a manager is set to leave. If you're a Chelsea football player and say you've just signed a three-year contract, you know to yourself, I'm going to outlast the manager here. Yeah. And if complacency can set in when, uh, in perhaps the Ireland rugby squad at the moment, if there's ever a possibility of that happening, then there's definitely a possibility of complacency just being an occupational hazard at Chelsea Football Club. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, Continuous. Yeah. It really it's, is. It, it's like, there in your locker, just ready to come out every any time you need it. It's it's an absolute banker of a trend at the moment, yeah. and uh, like some players ca is. can live with that, they can see it as a, a short term thing. But really, it has to seep into the subconscious at some point, which I think it has done with what we saw on, on Sunday afternoon. It is. It's amazing. And of course, just right on time as well. You know, he, he the Daily Telegraph has a lovely uh, interview with <laughs> the old lady. Look at that picture. <laughs> I want to be happy with my next job. And if that's Chelsea, by the way, I will be happy. Like, it's just perfect timing. It's literally like, yeah, I think I'll do an interview with you this week. It's just uh, kind of like, uh, it's not enough of a smile to look fake. It looks like an earnest smile. Yeah. Looking down the barrel of the lens. It, it's uh, it's like a LinkedIn profiler. Yeah, and of course, up on top, stay of execution, Sari hangs on to Chelsea job for now. Yeah. Like, let's literally, could we, could we get any more, you know, kind of suggestive on the one page? Uh, but I, I just, where I, I, I have to say... Um, it was absolutely like it. Whatever about Sari, that like I mean, his his reaction on 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 the weekend was just unbelievable. Mm. Like it was unbelievable to have see. You, have you ever seen it in any walk of life? <sighs> I've seen fellas come off and be annoyed and be really annoyed and do various different things, but I've never seen I've never seen a situation like that. No. The rule is that he actually doesn't have to come off. Isn't that well, true? Clearly, he obviously has uh, read the rule. Read the rule. He, he yeah. knew his rights as a Chelsea player, yeah. which is you know not respect your manager whatsoever. Yeah, uh, it almost seems like a necessary thing. We've got a couple of uh, the UK back pages this morning as well. Uh, it's a compliment, says Anthony Joshua. He laughed off Gerald Miller's accusation of doping. Liverpool must start respecting themselves, says Mark Critchley's report. That's Sandy Robertson speaking as well. And David Luiz saying we showed Sarri support. Now this may come from the fact that I do wonder how much. The Chelsea players actually respect Kepa. That yeah. it would be different if it was Eden Hazard or somebody whose performances all season have been magnificent. Yeah, like magnificent is maybe a strong word to describe Hazard's season because yeah. when he's been good, he's been great. Uh, but sometimes you can accuse him of dropping his head. But the point is that do the Chelsea players really think that Kepa has been worth the money he's been signed for? Like he's in the, something like the top five most expensive English signings of all time. And mm. um, like he's. Uh, he, has he lived up to that price tag? I would say a lot of his teammates would suggest no. So I think that's more kind of uh, a support for, uh, or a, a lack of support for Kepa than a support yeah, for Sarri. Yeah. Uh, we've also got the, the UK Mail here, Blues at War, same headline there. And Leeds may be sold if they fail to win promotion. So pretty big stakes there if they fail to go up this year. Uh, the mirror goes up my old club's a Sarri mess. That's Jose praising Kepa for showing personality. Mm. And the star... The UK star goes with Kepa, me in a job. Sari puts future in hands of Rebel goalie. And uh, Sari reads Kepa Riot Act, says the back of the sun this morning. And uh, the Times, as we've already said, Sari will not drop Kepa. Six Nations in talks with equity firm. And I think that's it from the UK back page of this morning. We've got AS as well this morning <coughs> to show you. And it is Plan Anti Vinicius. So uh, you can probably guess from that, even though it's not in our language, that there's going to be a plan without Vinicius there, uh, looking into El Clasico and the second leg of that one. It's on tomorrow night. Um, so that's Valverde considering Sergi Roberto or Semedo to cover his runs. Uh, all eyes clearly focused on tomorrow's sold-out Copa Clasico. That's the translation of that uh, on the back page. Just a couple of comments on the GA manager of the year so far. It has to be Ma Andy McEntee says, deck done. Kieran Cunningham says, no Peter Keane to annoy the Kerry man. I'm not, no comment at the moment from his, uh, from Anthony Moyles' <laughs> reluctance to include <laughs> Peter Keane. Staying uh, in the long grass. Owen. Can't believe that Owen Sheehan didn't get Peter Keane pushed through on the list. Um, again, Jonathan Higgins commenting there, no, no point in arguing over this one. A journalist once asked Mickey Graham what's it like to be manager of the year so far, or this year so far. He replied, I don't know, you'd have to ask Rory Gallagher, says David Kelly. Uh, Stuart Regan says, where is Terry Highland? Hashtag Leitrim Rising, Terry Highland 
ruthlessly getting caught by Anthony Moyles. We'll get Terry Highland and Peter Keane on together some morning to give out about Anthony Moyles. Uh, Deco B says, Moylesy is Mead manager, club manager of the year so far anyway, unbeaten oh. in the league and introduced a whole pile of young lads. Hashtag Mahon Farrer, says Deco B. Care to comment? No. Well, well I, I, this, this is a pretty big compliment. Only the league. Only the league. What's, what's going on at the moment? Ah. What, what, have, what have your results been like? Uh, not bad, not bad, not bad. Two draws and uh, uh, two wins. We're talking so. Dunshockland, of course. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just been told uh, about Dunshockland's corner forwards, two very promising kids that you've given game time to, and the pitch time has reaped rewards. Yeah, kids, yeah, we, 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 it's, it's very young. Actually, I have to say the standard, in, in, and I think it's starting to show true with the, with the senior team, the, the, you know, the standard is absolute. There's been a serious amount of work put in over the last five or six years. So the, a lot of 17, 18, 19 year olds really coming good. Big men, well able to play. So, you know, we've two lads, Luke Mitchell and Matthew Costello, who were on the Mead minor team last year. Matthew was the captain and Luke was corner forward. And they're, they're, they're good lads. You know, they're in with the Mead under 20s with Barry Callahan. But there's plenty of other fellas. You know, there's really, really good kind of stock coming through in Shockland. Um, and as I say, you know, all through, we've played numerous teams. we played Old Castle, we played Dunham or Ashburn. Uh, we've played Screen, and at the weekend we played Mine Alvey. And there's just there's just a good cohort of younger lads coming through the Mead setup, um, and it's great to see Andy, obviously given opportunities. Like there's a la- young lad, Dara Campion from Screen, who's playing on the on the senior team, and he's doing really really well. Um, so it's it's things are boding well. Like I mean, he he's 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 got a very very solid backline now, uh, and he's mixing in some really good a lot of pace, you know, but also pace with size. There was I suppose over the last number of years there was a lot of pace, but they were extremely small players. No, I don't mean that the bad bit, but you know when you're coming up against the physicality of say James McCarthy or you know Philly McMahon etc., um, it was just getting blown away a bit. Whereas these lads are actually big lads, you know, they're well able to handle it um, and there's obviously been a lot of work put into them and it's starting to reap the rewards. Is that a cool. trend at the moment that county teams are judging players on physicality as much as anything else, that they don't really have the patience, not really the patience, <sighs> but you kind of need to be big and ready to go from an early age, there's no time to wait for you to actually build up your man strength, so to speak. You have to be, I think you have to be and I think, you know, we commented about this a couple of weeks ago about the Kerry team. You know, uh, there's a massive difference in size and physicality, say, in someone like, you know, Shamie O'Shea from last year, right, to this year. Like, I mean, you can just see it. You can, actually, and I, was, and I was just looking at the Johnny Cavan game. Johnny O'Shea, Johnny O'Shea, sorry. I was looking at the Cavan game at the weekend, and even the Russ Common game, there's a lot of... There's 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 just size everywhere. There's big big units, you know, going around. Big legs, you know. You can see there's an awful lot of S and C being done in the right areas. Before it was all kind of very much top heavy, you know, like it being. But whereas now there's a lot of focus, obviously on, and obviously the resilience to keep going through training sessions and the the load that's being put on players. But um, I think you're right. You have to be the one big thing that co- happens to a lot of 18, 19, 20 year olds who break into senior teams is they just can't actually put up with the workload. So they end up tearing hamstrings, groins, whatever it is, because they go from a situation where they might be training twice or three times with a club to training six times. And it's just like, whoa, you know, it's a shock to the system. Um, so you need to prep that. So you're prepping that from 16, 17, 18, you're getting them used to it. Uh, so when they hit the senior setup, it's, it's, it's like, you know, yeah, I'm well used to this. You know. mm. I'm sure there's plenty of people watching as well this morning who are looking for your take on what happened at Congress at the weekend. We will get to that a little bit later on. We're going to turn to boxing next. But 